Welcome to this video tutorial where we are solving the 2021 paper 2 GCE construction question and it came as question number three. Straight away I'll read the question answer the whole of this question on a sheet of plain paper. A. Construct triangle EFG in which EF is equal to 11 centimeters EG is equal to 6.5 centimeters and GF is equal to 10 centimeters. B. Measure and write the size of angle EGF. All right. So in this question, we are being asked to construct a triangle. So this triangle is labeled e f g measurements have been given they've told us that e f is 11 centimeters e g is 6.5 e g is 6.5 centimeters and g f is 10 centimeters then they've asked us to measure the size of angle EGF, the size of angle EGF. We need to measure and write that angle. Okay, once we construct that, we would have answered question 3A and 3B. All right, our ruler is here and our pencil there. So the base is 11 centimeters. That is E, that is F. We have been told that EG is 6.5. So let's measure 6.5 on our compass. That's 6.5. That's 6.5 and GF is 10. So let's measure 10. So that is 10 centimeters. Okay, that's 10 centimeters. That's 10 centimeters. You do that. And you connect. Eleven centimeters, ten centimeters. 6.5 centimeters and that's our G. We've been asked to measure and write angle EGF. Angle EGF which is right here. So let's make that measurement. Using our compass Alignment is important, like I've said in my previous videos, make sure you align the protractor properly. Then pick the measurement. We are using the inner, that is 80. 81 that's 81 degrees that's 81 degrees all right so we have our 81 degrees 
you just try to confirm the other side yep 81 degrees wonderful so we indicate that uh, the angle EGF is equal to 81 degrees the angle EGF is equal to 81 degrees having done this we've answered question 3a and 3b so let's go to question 3c which says within the triangle EFG Construct the locus of points which are one equidistant from EG, equidistant from EG, two, two point five centimeters from EF, and three equidistant from E and F. So let's see on our sketch what we are constructing. So the first one says uh, the locus of point has to be equidistant from E, G, and E, F. So E is common. There's E, G, then E, F. So you stand on E, and you're going to draw a line which will cross that way. That will be, this line will represent the equidistant of E, G, and E, F. Question number two, um, a locus of point which is 2.5 centimeters from E, F. So 2.5 centimeters from the line EF, it means you draw an arc there and an arc there and join the two lines like that. The distance from there to there should be 2.5. So this line on top will represent the equidistance of 2.5 centimeters from EF. And lastly, equidistant from E and F. The equidistant from E and F, we are going to draw a line which is going to cut EF into two equal parts and that will represent the equidistant of E and F. All right, so that's what we are going to now create in our triangle. So let's, let's get to it. The first one says, equidistant from e g and e f equidistance from e g and e f so that one is that you do that and that enlarge this slightly stand on that point do that stand on the other point Start changing the measurement and do that. Connect the two. So you've you've constructed the equidistant of EG and EF. The second one said uh, 2.5 centimeters from EF. So 2.5 centimeters from EF. Let's measure 2.5 centimeters. That is 2.5 centimeters. So you can do that. Wonderful. Connect the top parts of the, the two arcs. Wonderful, like that. So this line you've drawn represents the equidistant of 2.5 from EF. So you can indicate in that way that this is 2. 0.5 centimeters and the last one says the locus of point which is equidistant 
from E and F. From E and F, we are literally just cutting this line EF into two. So I think for this one, you can just do that. So draw that, come downwards, you do the same. So we're standing on F, you now move, stand on your E, and do that. And the other side. All right. So there we have it. That's what we have there. So you know that when you stood at F, you created this arc, and this one, when you are standing at E, you created this one and uh, this one, and they both met where this, the, the two met there, and where the two met on the other side, you connect those two, those points. All right, so this, is the equidistant of E and F. If you do that, you would have uh, successfully answered question 3C. Let's now go to our question 3D. 3D says a point P within triangle EFG, a point P within triangle EFG is such that it is nearer to EF than to EG. Nearer to E than to F and is greater than or equal to 2.5 centimeters away from EF. Indicate clearly by shading the region in which P must lie. Indicate clearly by shading the region in which P must lie. So here we have, again, uh, about three conditions to satisfy for us to identify uh, the region where P must lie. The first condition is that, the first condition is that uh, P is nearer to EF than to EG. P is nearer to EF than to EG. So this locus of point which, which we drew here is what is helping us to determine on whether the point is nearer to EG, EG is this section, and EF is this section. So the point says that this area we are looking for, or rather region, it is nearer to EF. So it, it, it is downwards in that way. It's nearer to EF, so it's downwards, it's this side. And... The second one, we've been told that it is nearer to E than to F. It is nearer to E than to F. So this straight line here is what is determining it being nearer to F or it being nearer to E. So we've been told that, one, it is uh, this section and it is on this side nearer to E. And the last condition is that it is greater than or equal to. It is greater than or equal to. It is greater than or equal to. So you have this line here. This is the 2.5 line. Less than is down there. Greater than is above there. So for us to find this line, we've been told that it is greater than 2.5. So it is nearer to E, it is closer to EF, it is closer to EF, and it is greater than 2.5. So this region, that region referred to is this one here. So this is the region where the point P must lie. P must lie in this region there. That's the region which was being uh, talked about. So uh, thank you so much for following. I hope you were helped in your revision through following.
this video tutorial thank you so much please do remember to like the video leave a comment share with your friends and don't forget to subscribe